Well, welcome back to Techno Surgeon YouTube channel. So, the NVIDIA's head, not head, but Michael Gagan, the spokesperson from NVIDIA, has said like cryptocurrencies may them lose money, which is not the case because NVIDIA literally made mining GPUs and they were having 55 millions of lawsuit on them because they didn't tell their stakeholders and stuff 5.5 million to be exact for failing to disclose crypto mining impact on their stakeholders and stuff so yeah nvidia basically went all in with crypto's boom and stuff and they're saying like cryptocurrencies crypto boom was not beneficial for nvidia though nvidia made a lot of money on it so yeah, they should have done this pr statement when it was cryptocurrency when it was all time high but now it just feels wrong even though they tried with half halving hash rate and hash limiter then also it was a debacle because miners were able to get past it and then the fact that they made mining cards specifically for mining also is a bad way to say it like nvidia like all this crypto stuff is is in parallel progress and kagan said to trick guardian that AI is the future, which is true that AI is the future and they knew like crypto was going to fail, but it looks bad from the PR point of view, like from the consumer point of view, not from PR standard standards, but yeah, it looks bad. So yeah, that's regarding NVIDIA, what they are saying. And next up, we have some new nice news about AMD, but first we should talk about Intel's battle merge and Intel's next generation battle merge is going to get some awesome upgrades as ready coming thing. Had some information regarding it first. We know that the roadmap that, that Battle Mage is coming in Q1 of 2024, Q1 or Q2 of next year, and yeah, it's it says to be on track as of now because Battle Mage, according to Red Gaming Tech, will come with 64x equals doubling that of Arc A770, which is insane. Clock targets are set to 3 gigahertz and plus GDDR6 or 6x with stone turn to 56 bit bus and a whopping 48 megabits of L2 cache. So yeah, Battle Mage is going all in, doubling their cores from 32 to 64 cores. So yeah, the performance target has already been increased to 3 gigahertz. So it it and the supposedly it's supposed to go against RTX 4070 and 4080. So yeah, the performance of Battle Mage should be insane. And and if this what it is saying is true, that might indeed be happening. And the die size will be similar to AD103, and it is based on TSMC's 4 nanometer process. Which is which will be power efficient nonetheless, and the launch date for the gaming variant is set for Q1 and Q2. Though we know what happened with Arc, but they should launch Battle Match very soon, like when they're supposed to launch it in Q1 or Q2, because it would be a nice competition to RTX 40 series. And the he doesn't know what will be the ray tracing performance. Will it get an increase or not? As he says over on the shit, like. Big improvements of ray tracing and ML performance is not certain of it. And will there be an overhaul like a complete redesign of X Ecos? But he says like it might happen, it might not happen, so he's not certain of it. But it is nice to see. But given the fact like Raja Kaduri, the head of Intel Discrete GPU has left the company to start its own, it looks bad because they might ditch it. They shouldn't ditch battle after battle match like the discrete there should be a third competition in the market so we can get some more competition and maybe battle match is the card if they launch it perfectly with all the improvements they had with arc and with all of the performance uplift they gave going to arc they might be able to pull it off in battle match and maybe celestial also and next up we know how fsr3 works with amd like we thought like fsr3 comes with frame generation and it had and it needs some special kind of a course, which is only there in 7900 series, like RX 7000 series, has those sp special accelerators to use it. We thought FSR 3.0 will be similar to DLSS 3, and it will be only limited to 7000 series, but it is not indeed the case because in, during GDC, they had an event and they showed off FSR 3.0, and FSR 3.0 was nice. And the fact is, they are going some they are doing something insane which is which nvidia never does it and it might make nvidia lose ground a little bit because fsr 3.0 comes they are planning to launch fsr 3.0 in their documentation this is like they are planning to launch it with mit open support so basically 
it says like you can achieve up to two times frame rate or boost in the process in fsr 3.0 over fsr 2 and the hyper probability that there will be at least one sample for every interpolated pixel but the thing is that they had one challenge where it says like they talked about that challenge and stuff but there's one thing that they said like mit license to allow optimal flexibility of integration if needed so uh, according to it mit is open source so basically they are going to take fsr 3.0 to open source though it might take some uh, some while to port it to rx 6000 series or back log of rx series like rtx 3000 rtx 20 series 10 series or maybe some of the nvidia's card old generation of nvidia or rx cards but yeah if given the fact like it is open source mit license it will have some of the other developers might be able to do it and port it back to some previous generation of gpus which is indeed the case with fsr 2.0 fsr like it supports from all, all the way back to F, rx 570 rx 500 series so it is indeed the case and it will be a nice thing because it might support nvidia and given the fact like dlss 3 only supports rtx 40 series it will look bad for nvidia like fso 3.0 will be clearly the superior and it will this is like it is an easy transition from fsr 2 to fsr 3 and stuff and given the fact that it is open source we might see greater adoption compared to dlss 3 let's just say and speaking of amd we also have some nice news regarding ryzen like ryzen 8000 not 8000 series we know like 8000 is coming very soon but the next generation and it is come from milky way like milky way dot home i talked about it that it comes with hybrid cores later down the line then zen 4c which is similar to intel's architecture but now we have the hardware specification for zen 4c like it comes with two performance and four efficiency cores which was there in milky way galaxy milky way dot home but now we have the confirmation directly from nvidia not nvidia directly from amd itself regarding ryzen and it comes from data sheet as you can see amd family 19h model 70h which is zen 4 phoenix cpus and there they clearly describe it that it has performance core and efficiency core so it is true they are indeed adopting big dot little design and it is not similar to and intel's adaptation where performance core is really powerful and efficiency core is there just there for letters but according to amd and 3 d center.org the performance score will be powerful but the efficiency core is indeed the same as performance score with just lower clock frequency so it will have all the capabilities of the performance score even in efficiency goes so amd might come swinging right back at intel in the 8000 series possibly or 9000 series we still don't know maybe in gen 5 or gen 6 but yeah gen 4c is going to be like their starting point as what they did with ryzen 1000 like to check the waters how it it is done so and amd is doing good with ryzen in this scenario also 7000 series is also nice and in mobile cpus it's also doing nice and in apus also and given the fact like phoenix and dragon rage is coming this year it will look terrible for intel so let's just see what happens time will tell and yeah that's it for me today what do you think about all of the news going on sound of your thoughts in the comment section below like share and subscribe and i will meet you in the next one